we are in Jordan. We're in Jordan. <laughs> if you watched last week's video, you'll know that we drove all the way to Budapest, said goodbye to the van and jumped on a 22 euro flight to return. It brought us here. First up on our time in Jordan will be the northern city of Jerash and the ancient Roman ruins. We might not have the van, but we've hired a car. And so we'll be driving ourselves from Jerash down to the Dead Sea, the lowest point on earth. We have a bit of a treat in store in the Dead Sea and it's not just me bobbing in the water and covering myself in mud. No, we stay in a properly fancy hotel. This is part one of a self-drive road trip through Jordan, which will include the ancient city of Jarash in the north, the Dead Sea, Petra and Wadi Rum. It is going to be epic. We're the newbies, a family of travellers with big dreams. I'm Tara, this is John, and this year we were joined by our little boy Crusoe. 2020 sent the world for a loop, and it sent us on a journey. Not wanting to waste a single minute or second of it, we embraced van life and travelled to over 20 countries in Europe in our self-converted camper van. With the arrival of Crusoe into the world, our priorities remain the same. To make every moment matter, to take this little family around the world, and to teach our children about huge oh horizons. God. A life full of opportunity and adventure around every corner. It's very dark outside. It is very early. There comes a point at three o'clock in the morning and you're leaving at 3.40, that fighting the baby to sleep just becomes a completely pointless exercise. I think Crusoe's just too excited. It's his second continent today. It's his second continent today. We are about to head to Jordan today so that we can go and swim in the Dead Sea, see Petra, hang out in the deserts of Wadi Rum, and today, later today, go to a place called Jerash, which is just outside of Oman, some old Roman ruins. We can't wait. Taking a break from the van was a big decision. The comfortable European temperatures of spring, summer and autumn are fast fading and we really want to make the most of them. But when you find a return flight to Jordan from the city you're in for £22 each return, it's tricky not to feel like that's something you should be doing. So here we are, jumping on another Ryanair flight from Budapest to Oman our first journey out of Europe in 2021 and the first since Crusoe was born. Back to the sunshine, darling. Out the car hire. How exciting. Yeah, and got through security just fine. Real super easy, in fact. Um, All fine, as long as you're vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, they didn't even check to see if we had a PCR test, actually. No, they didn't, but we had to get in the vaccinated queue. And Jordanian visa, no longer 20 bucks like it used to be, as I remember it. 40 Jordanian dinas now, which is um, it's about $50, so it's quite expensive. Crusoe owes me another 50 bucks because they wouldn't <laughs> let him in for free either. <laughs> Not even half price because he's only half size. <laughs> Lots of welcome, welcome, welcome. Have a lovely time. Super friendly. Really, really nice arrival. If we were going to do it again, we would buy the Jordanian Pass. Yeah, Jordan Pass. Jordan Pass. Um, I didn't know about that. Stupid me. It was a last minute booking. Should have sorted out the Jordan Pass. The Jordan Pass includes your visa and entrance to Petra and other historical sites in oh, Jordan. You're mm. And you it's... couldn't afford it at the desk? No. Um, you've, got to, you've got to buy it in advance of arriving. Um, it's 88 Jordanian dinars, which is about $100 or 88 pounds. And it works out to cheaper. It gives you three days in Petra as well, but you'll probably only need two. Let's get on the way, shall we? Sure, <laughs> let's do it. Darling, we miss you. Yeah, well, I'm at the front now. Look, aeroplane taking off. That's cool, isn't it? That's exciting. Yeah, World Jordanian. Here we go, look, palm trees. How exciting. Desert. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Welcome. Jordan. Welcome to Jordan. 
well this is super exciting for me because it's my very first experience of anywhere in the Middle East which is super cool I've only ever flown to places like Dubai and Doha I never left the airport isn't it such a joy to go somewhere new and just learn stuff about a new place so anyway our first stop in Jordan is Jerash which is just north of Amman and um, is the site of some ancient Roman ruins which we're gonna go and have a look at this afternoon but first things first we are hungry so as soon as we get to our Airbnb we're gonna go out and try and find somewhere to have some lunch we have arrived at our Airbnb and I am particularly excited to be in this place because it only cost us 15 quid and it's about half an hour from the Jira <laughs> I think Grusso definitely wants to, doesn't he? He does indeed. I think he spied a cat. No cats allowed. Come on then. Very cute. Isn't that cute? Yeah, That's so what we need. What have we got? A couple of mattresses on the floor? A couple of mattresses on the floor. We brought Crusoe's and Sleepyheads. He can just sleep on the floor too. We've got tea and coffee. We've got tea and coffee. There's a little bathroom around the corner there. Everything we need. And it's just beautifully decorated. That's really, really cool. Okay. And that view, man. Cool. Mega. I don't know about you, but I am impatient for food. It's been... I'm starving. Let me just find Crusoe's hat. Yeah. And then... Um, Get on our way? Let's get on our way. The journey to get here had been a long one, and by now all three of us were starting to feel some fatigue. Our little champ wearing the signs better than John and I. A glimpse of the ruins along the way helped to keep the spirits up. It has been about 20 years since the last time I was here, and the last time I was here, I was on my way into Syria bribing my way in. I got stuck on the border of Syria for 12 hours, but that's a whole different story. Um, I'm excited. It looks the same. Good. Of course it would. It's 2,000 years old. <laughs> Why would it change? Up we go. You're going to go and see some Roman ruins now, boy. Roman ruins? What are they? Cool. You can't bring Sophie. Sophie's got to stay here. Crusoe, come on, <clears throat> why don't you try some Middle Eastern food? This is fairly traditional stuff. What do you fancy? Which plate? Some tzatziki? Yum, yum, yum. Well, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, that'll keep us going for sure. Yeah. Crusoe's very excited. What's that, my boy? Yeah. So we have got no access to Wi-Fi or internet or anything because our phones aren't working here. And it's really weird. I get, John and I were just saying, like, oh, let's, you know, have a read online about Jerash and find something out about it. But we can't. So we're going to have to see what there is to find out in the museum. Definitely Roman though, right? Definitely Roman. Okay. The entrance to Jerash is through a mishmash of stands selling all sorts of curios that you'd expect from this part of the world. Once through the haggling and bartering, a five pound ticket gets you entrance to ancient Jerash. What a terrific place to start our Jordanian journey. The tired eyes that felt almost jet-lagged lifted by the sights in front of us as we strode forward to explore. It's really cool if he goes through there, it's like all of the round arches and then the square door at the back, it's just really beautiful. So this was the Hippodrome and they think it could have seated 17,000 spectators. Um, unsure whether or not it was ever really used for racing. Check it out. You've got the... You know, it's just like that one in, um, in Athens, in the centre of Athens, the old Olympic Stadium. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. The same shape, like with the seats all the way around. And then you've got the arch end there. Actually, it's like ancient Olympia. 
isn't it? You remember being in Olympia? Yeah, yeah. And the start line was there, and yeah. we talked about you run through the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you've got this, but this one's a lot bigger. It than is bigger, Olympia. isn't it? Jerash was founded between 7,500 and 5,500 BC. Now that's quite a big gap of uncertainty. However, it is safe to assume that people were living here for almost 10,000 years. Though it's unlikely that this site was permanently settled the entire time, unlike neighbouring cities such as Erbil in Iraq, it does make Jerash a settlement that has seen history from hunter-gatherer to agrarian societies and onto our modern times. Outside of Italy, Jerash is considered one of the best preserved ancient Roman ruins in the world. So, 10,000 years of history and a huge must for anyone who loves columns and Roman ruins. You know, love, I'm reminded of the Acropolis and it's really made me appreciate how fortunate we've been to be in some incredible places without very many people around. This is one of them. We're just so, so fortunate. And this is one of the big reasons why we decided to come to Jordan now and not carry on with the van was because we're very aware that the world is going to start opening up soon and places like this are going to get busy again. And it is such a joy to be able to walk around and have a bit of space and it's something that I will never, ever, ever forget or take for granted. I haven't heard that in so long. <sighs> too long. Wow, <laughs> too long. It feels like it's, like the world is ready again. Let's go, I say. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go everywhere. We spent the rest of the afternoon wandering and exploring Jerash, feeling excited and reminding each other how lucky we truly are. Our newbie motto, be brave, think big and explore, guiding our choice to travel to Jordan in the first place. And we could just feel that we had 100% done the right thing. If our videos and stories from Jordan have an impact, we hope that they'll inspire you to take that trip that you've been waiting for since the pandemic started. The world is waiting for you and the welcome is so warm. Good morning. Hello, my little man. So, that's it for Jerash. Today, we are going to leave this lovely little Airbnb and drive our way to the Dead Sea. We have got some points to use, so we're staying somewhere rather nice, which we're looking forward to. It'll be a real treat. I'm excited to swim in the Dead Sea, something I wanted to do ever since I was a child. Turns out we can't take Crusoe in because apparently the water is very, very caustic and it will burn him. So, Crusoe will have to wait until he's a bit bigger to go in the Dead Sea, but John and I will certainly have a dip, I'm sure of it. A float, more like. A float. Do you know, it is the lowest place on the planet. That's we so are cool. staying in the lowest place on the planet. I never knew that. Oh, and the amazing hosts of this place have offered to make us breakfast. So we've got some breakfast to have with the lovely people next door. I feel thoroughly spoiled. We got on our way, heading south along a route that will eventually take us right down to the south of Jordan. It's a beautiful drive, and if you're considering self-driving in Jordan, it is fairly straightforward. You do need to keep your wits about you, the roads are good, but the driving less so. On the odd occasion, speed bumps pop out of nowhere, but outside of Amman, there's very little traffic on the roads and it makes the going a whole lot easier. It's an absolutely beautiful country, and as we start to leave the city and get into the countryside, there are vast hills in front of us. And before we know it, we've had our first glimpse of the Dead Sea. Well, this is totally not a new thing to do, but we're going to be staying at a Hilton Hotel. It's actually a resort, which is weird. It's very weird. I think I've gone the wrong way. <laughs> I feel like a real treat to this. So before we started building Safari, our van, we took out a Hilton credit card, a MasterCard. The cool thing about taking out a card like that, not necessarily that particular one, is that you get points. We've earned a bunch of points by spending money on that credit card and making sure that it's paid off at the end of every single month. We were going to spend the money anyway. We had to because we were building a van. And one of the rewards is that we've got enough points to have a few nights at a snazzy hotel like this one for free. 
You ready? Have a gander at that view. That's all right, isn't it? That's very much all right. Let's go for a swim in the Dead Sea. At the lowest point on the planet. Minus 401 meters below sea level. The Dead Sea is dropping about a meter every year. That's an extraordinary amount. Water pressures from Jordan and the recent influx of refugees from Syria has put an incredible pressure on water usage. This means that every year the Dead Sea gets further away from hotels that dot its banks, which means getting down to the sea can be a real adventure. You ready? I'm ready. You so first. This is a big life moment swimming in the Dead Sea. Big life moment, yeah, for sure. So cool. Okay, off I go. Off you go. Let's go for a swim. Crusoe is getting really fidgety and desperate. Your shame, you know, what, what are we doing? Where am I not allowed to swim? He's got his cosy on and everything. Right, boys, your turn. At the party pool. And so, as to be expected, the holiday resort delivered a very resort-style stay. We swam up to the bar in the pool and enjoyed a few drinks overlooking the Dead Sea. Crusoe is proving to be a real little water baby, so he happily spent the afternoon paddling about. And we even caught him dancing on the pool ledge. All too quickly, our treat of a stay at the Hilton came to an end, and it was time to say goodbye to the brilliant team who are just so welcoming and over the moon to have tourists back with them. So we have said goodbye to the Hilton this morning and are making our way along the Dead Sea and towards Petra. I am so excited to see Petra. But first, we've stopped to see some of the salt flats and get up close to the salt crystals along the banks of the lake. I'm sat in the car with Crusoe, who's fast asleep, and John has run down because the water is actually really far away. <laughs> the Dead Sea has been dropping by a metre in levels ever since 2015. Apparently, they're digging a pipeline from the Red Sea to fill it back up again. So anyway, interesting to see what the future of the Dead Sea looks like here, where we've stopped you can really see how much the water's dropped. On our way to Petra, we've just done the climb up through the mountains from the Dead Sea and the views are mind-blowing. This country is astonishing. From here, the journey gets only more beautiful. Tune in next week as we explore Petra and Wadi Rum. And take it from us, it's not one to be missed. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave us a comment because we love hearing from you. For now, it's into the desert we go, and we'll see you next week.